Hi, my name is Matt. I lead the Growth Accelerator team at Swanky. Thank you for watching our Tips in 10 series where we seek the best advice from our partners to help online retailers adapt to the rapidly changing e-commerce environment. Today we have Doran from Dynamic Yield. Um, so over to you. Um, who are you and what does Dynamic Yield do for online retailers? Hi, I'm Doran, um, Customer Success Team Lead at Dynamic Yield UK. Um, Dynamic Yield is a personalization platform and we help marketers to personalize content on the website um, across all industries, e-commerce, travel, media, um, with the aim to help the marketers to serve different content based on who the user is across all platforms, um, websites, mobiles, apps, emails, and ads. Perfect. So as consumers are moving from buying on the high street to e-commerce, are there any ways in which um, merchants can use online visual merchandising to reflect the traditional bricks and mortar store experience? Yes, there are many ways that uh, retailers can do that. Um, and it's important to always think of who the user is and what is the user's intent when they land on the website. So if we take a few examples, um, when we walk into a store today, we have the window shop that gives us inspiration of what this brand is, what do they sell? And we can think about it similar when the user is landing on the website for the first time. Uh, traditionally, people used to land on the homepage, but today many people land on category pages or product pages. And what we should do is we should identify this user when they land on the site and highlight the brand, um, your unique selling points, um, showing the messages that you want the customers to know about your brand um, through messages, through overlays, through banners, any, any um, way that you can think of. Um, other things to do is also similar to a store when there are people that work there that can identify if someone is looking for something or needs inspiration or needs a bit motivation to start exploring. You can also do that online. Um, understanding where this user is coming from, is he searching for something that we can help them find faster? Are they about to leave the site and maybe we can try to convince them to check something else? Um, showing different content on the website that will inspire them and, and help them explore more and more products to eventually help them check out. And um, other things you can do is also building trust. Uh, again, similar to in store, when someone is trying something, um, they have always people there that can tell them it looks really nice. Um, this is a very high demand product. You can build trust and confidence also online with social proof messages, um, highlighting things that are top selling, new arrivals. And lastly is making checkout easy. No one likes to stand in long queues and similar on websites, people don't wanna have a long and um, a difficult checkout. They want it to be easy, convenient, knowing what to expect and just ending it fast. That sounds good. I think there's been a couple of examples recently where um, retailers have struggled slightly to cope with demand online. Um, is there anything Dynamic Yield can do to help um, push out quick messaging or make very quick changes to websites where a traditional dev team might get held up? Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the benefits of Dynamic Yield is that it's very friendly user. You don't need to be a developer to use it. Uh, we have a lot of out of the box templates that you can also check out later on our um, templates library. Uh, and the idea of Dynamic Yield is that you can really upload content very fast. We do have examples also in these days where um, obviously trading meetings are daily meetings and decisions need to be made fast. With Dynamic Yield, our customers can apply ad hoc changes on the website. If it's by showing different messages regarding to COVID-19, um, if it's for promoting products that they have in stock and they want to get out of stock fast. So yes, you can definitely make changes without any developer uh, coding skills. Perfect. So um, the next question is, how are online retailers coping with COVID-19 and how are they using personalization and testing tools? Um, so what are the tactics that they should really be considering right now to optimize their stores? 
Um, the first thing is definitely these are uncertain times. And what our customers can do is communicate certainty in these uncertain times. Um, this is relevant for all our customers from all industries. Um, a few examples of what our customers are doing is using Dynamic Heal to upload content and testing what message is more is building more certainty. If it's showing longer returns, um, if it's highlighting the delivery time, if it's highlighting the payment options, um, and checking what is building more certainty these days. Um, other things that I see our customers are doing is adapting to the new lifestyle. Today, everyone is working from home. And what we can see is a lot of customers changing the content on the website when users land on the website. Um, with different messages, such as everything you need to work from home. This is really relevant for websites that are electronic websites or uh, home and furniture websites where you can really promote uh, personalized content based on what you need to work from home. If you know that someone recently bought a new desk, you can now promote maybe a new screen, you can promote a convenient chair to go with that. Um, and really help the customers to build their home office. Um, another example is also to be aware of the high demand product. Today, obviously, loungewear, activewear, sports shoes, these are all high demand. And we do see more and more customers promoting these products with banners, uh, with overlays when users are landing on the website, promoting product recommendations with the most essential products or most popular products that people can relate to. Um, messages such as stay active while working from home and promoting a few workout clothes is a good example of how our customers are coping with it. Um, more things that are being considered today is, is considering the business needs. So obviously trading meetings are completely different today. Um, the stock and inventory is completely different and decisions need to be made on daily basis of what to do and what to show on the website. And what you can do is you can promote these products with promotions to increase the purchase rate of these specific items that the business wants to promote and get out of their stock. Okay. So um, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the data side of Dynamic Yield, will that help um, retailers identify the, the most popular, or I suppose the most viewed products that they're trying to, or at least consumers are trying to get hold of? but perhaps aren't quite selling as quickly as um, a retailer might hope? Yes, absolutely. Um, with Dynamic Yield, we can identify what are those high demand products and we can either help our marketers to promote these or if they don't want to promote this because they're selling out from themselves, they can also choose not to show the most popular products and maybe trying to cross sell from other categories or maybe trying to promote those that are not getting enough traffic, but are high in inventory and they do need to get rid out of their stock. Perfect. So user intent is changing um, and forecasting where it might go over the next few months is proving difficult. It could swing wildly from one direction to another. How can um, the data provided for retailers and dynamic yield help them understand customer intent, um, particularly through segmentation? There are ways you can still use, use this data to predict the user's intent um, by understanding who are the users, where are they coming from, what are they looking, how often are they visiting the site. Actually, because people are, are staying more at home, then they may have more frequent visits to a website. And all of that can be leveraged with real-time segmentation with Dynamic Yield. Um, identifying first-time visitors and, as mentioned, highlighting unique selling points, highlighting why they should buy with this brand, highlighting the high demand products can help them find what they're looking for faster. And identifying returning visitors who maybe previously purchased something, you can use this information to cross sell and promote other categories instead. Good. Thank you, Doran, for your advice at this time. And thank you uh, so much for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with the next video in our series, hit like and subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to discuss any of today's topics in detail, you can do so on swankyagency.com.